In this week's newscast, shock, grief and anger over the crash of flight MH17. The carbon tax gone. Liberals relieved while Labour raised the ETS from the ashes. And the RSPCA labels Spanish bullfighting barbaric. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Stanislaw. Good evening. For the second time this year, a Malaysian Airlines flight has ended in tragedy following MH17 being shot down over separatist-controlled eastern Ukraine on Thursday. Leaders around the world, including Prime Minister Tony Abbott, have condemned the attacks. Canberra correspondent Blake Danielzak has the summary. Four months after Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 went missing, never to be seen again, the airline has suffered another catastrophe. The impact of this disaster, enormous. Flight MH17 was shot down by a surface-to-air missile as it flew over pro-Russian separatist-held airspace in eastern Ukraine on Friday. MH17 was en route from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur and had 298 people on board. All lost their lives, including 36 Australians. Now, Prime Minister Tony Abbott and Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten paid their respects to the victims' families on Friday here in Canberra. Let's take a look at what they had to say. As things stand, this looks less like an accident than a crime. And if so, the perpetrators must be brought to justice. This is a violation of the rules of civilisation. It is a tyrannical, wild act. Meanwhile, Australians who lost their loved ones are still reeling from the shock and pain. 24-year-old aeroscience graduate Fatima Duchinsky's parents were devastated after the tragedy. Ivan Lung spoke with Fatima's mother, Angela. How would you like the world to remember your daughter? Ah, I would like um, to the world to remember my daughter as this bright, shining peacemaker. She was uh, bright and shining and uh, brilliant aerospace engineer, scientist. Are you proud of her? Very, very. I'm, I told her that I'm really proud and uh, that it's a great achievement to be an aerospace engineer. It's, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, so, it's such an effort to achieve this. Meanwhile, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has said an investigation will be launched into the incident and he is determined to bring the perpetrators to justice if indeed MH17 was shot down. Blake Danielzak, WAMN News, Canberra. After two weeks' worth of confusion, the Senate has finally repealed Labor's controversial carbon tax. While Prime Minister Tony Abbott said government has delivered its election promise, Labor plans to risk their 2016 campaign prospects by relaunching an emissions trading scheme. Darren McElane reports. Order there being 39 ayes and 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative, which means the Clean Energy Legislation Carbon Tax Repeal Bill and seven related bills have passed. The Federal Senate has passed the Carbon Tax Repeal Bill after minority parties, including Palmer United Party, supported the bill, 39-32, making Australia the first country in the world to repeal a climate change policy. As soon as um, the utilities in this state are relieved of the carbon tax, uh, the state government will ensure that uh, those savings are passed on to consumers. Electricity prices in Western Australia will reduce by 8% or approximately $126 per year. Gas prices will also fall by 4%. Darren McElane, WAMN News. Barbaric and horrific, these are among the words used by the RSPCA to criticise the latest festival of bullfighting in Spain. The controversial sport again attracted attention after bull gold runners, including two Australians, during the street run. Daniel Edwards spoke with the RSPCA spokesman, Tim Main. Uh, the RSPCA doesn't tolerate any kind of animal fighting, whether it be bullfighting, cockfighting, dogfighting, any, uh, any uh, fighting that engages an animal in pain and suffering, we're dead against that. Yeah, yeah, the bull and the fighting um, was being speared for entertainment purposes. Is that uh, the barbaric? 
Uh, if a bull is being speared for entertainment pur purposes, yes, we can consider that barbaric. Uh, it's something out of the dark ages, and the RSPCA certainly doesn't approve and would like that banned. Bullfighting has been like, you know, entrenched in the Spanish culture for like quite a long time. So like, you know, it's, it is going to be really, like really hard to get rid of. Yeah. It will be hard to get rid of, but I think if they, uh, if they do their utmost to get rid of it and uh, spread some information as to what these animals actually go through and uh, how some of them are killed at the end of the, uh, the bullfights, uh, then I think that uh, they, they should work harder to get rid of it. And uh, what sort of actions can the RSPCA take to make this happen? The RSPCA takes a number of actions when it comes to uh, cruel forms of sport or any other form of entertainment that involves animal suffering. Uh, basically we encourage people to write to their local MPs, even write to the Spanish government, start their own petitions against it. Um, the more people that are involved and the more pressure put on governments to stop this form of animal cruelty the better. Perth's new stadium design has been unveiled in Burswood and the good news is it will cost $40 million less than the original budget. The new state-of-the-art five-level stadium will initially accommodate 60,000 sports fans and host a wide range of sports. It has two giant TV screens, more than 1,000 television monitors, over 70 food and drink options, 4G and Wi-Fi internet access and has more than 1,500 bathrooms. The stadium is expected to be completed in time for the 2018 AFL season. West Australians are very proud. They're proud of their state, they're proud of their city, they're proud of the achievements of people and they will take great pride in this stadium. Uh, it will be a magnificent entry statement to Perth, uh, set in a stunning parkland setting. Troy Boswell is still in the limelight of his car crash incident in February. Latest documents obtained by the opposition under Freedom of Information revealed that Mr Boswell had not even signed the risk cover form. It's also revealed that one of the owners of the vehicles damaged was asked to sign a confidential agreement for a $3,000 settlement in exchange for her silence. Labor's transport spokesman Ken Travers labelled the payments as hush money. It is a cover-up of massive proportions. It's got to stop and the government's got to come clean and release all of the details. And here's Carly Samata with Science. Thanks Evan and Danielle. Backyard amateur astronomer T.G. Tan has co-discovered an unusual planet orbiting outside the solar system. Mr. Tan said he was looking for a new challenge when he began hunting for exoplanets, which are small, faint and difficult to detect. Most exoplanets orbit single stars. What is unique about Mr. Tan's discovery is that the exoplanet orbits one of a pair of stars in a binary star system, almost completely ignoring the companion star. The discovery suggests that terrestrial planets may orbit single members of binary star pairs, increasing the opportunities for astronomers to discover life on other planets. New climate models have shown that declines in rainfall over southwest Australia over the last 40 years are linked to greenhouse gas emissions and ozone depletion. The research, which was published in Nature Geoscience this week, suggests the trend is likely to continue with predictions of a 40% reduction in autumn and winter rains by the end of the century. The results show the impact of human activity on climate was more severe in southwest Australia than anywhere else in Australia. The findings warn the southwest may face increasing risks to reliable water resources. Plans to frack in the Kimberley have been suspended until next year. The announcement by Buru Energy comes after calls from environmental groups to halt the plans and strong community opposition to the proposal. Last month, conservation groups exposed the results of a secret survey conducted by the Department of Mines and Petroleum, which found there was overwhelming opposition to gas fracking in the Kimberley. The DMP and Buru Energy are refusing to release key information to the public. And that's science. Thank you, Carly. And that's how Perth looks this week. If you want more news, hop onto our website. Thanks for your company. We'll catch you again next week. Good night.